welcome back to today's lesson on how to open a clothing store online. Today we'll be taking a look at how to choose a logo and color palette for your online store, which will be the first step in developing your brand identity. Let's get into it. First, we need to consider your theme, style, and aesthetic, and how they fit into your brand. If you haven't already watched the lesson on how to go about choosing those, I will link it down below in the description bar. These are things we want to consider when planning our logo because we want to have an idea of your color palette and overall branding. This is important because your logo and your graphics will be the first thing a customer sees when they stumble upon your website or social media accounts. First impressions count! In addition to this, color repetition allows you to increase your brand association to those colors which in turn strengthens your whole brand. Let's think about some well-known brands. The Swedish furniture company IKEA uses blue and yellow, which are inspired by the colors of the Swedish national flag. These colors contrast, so they stand out easily and are easy to recognize. Blue evokes a sense of trust, while the yellow gives you the feeling that shopping at IKEA will help you to brighten up the room. Colors are powerful. A color could evoke a particular emotion or convey certain information about your brand without using words. A particular color can change your customer's mood or feeling about your store and your products. Emotions can drive our decision making, so choosing the right color and logo combination matters because we want to drive our customers to buy our products from our store. Another example is Adidas. Adidas has a logo that is known around the world. The brand uses many colors to represent their wide array of products. This is a result of their famous logo displaying three stripes. The recognition of this allows for them to choose different colors as opposed to sticking to just one. Depending on the product, they may use different colors to display different meanings about the message they want their customers to feel for each individual product. This is why it may be helpful to learn a bit about color psychology before finalizing your store's brand colors. First, let's take a look at the main colors or primary color without considering different shades that make up each color. What do you think of when you see the color pink? Red, orange, blue, green, yellow, purple, white, brown, gray, black? Each of these colors may cause a certain emotion or feeling when you see them. Red is often associated with danger, excitement, and energy. It is bold and wakes you up. It's also known for being the color of passion and love. Pink is feminine. It's sentimental and romantic. Baby pink may have a different vibe than hot pink. Each could potentially represent a different target audience. Orange is vibrant and provides a sense of life. It's also creative, adventurous, and it's often associated with being budget friendly. Yellow is a positive, optimistic color. You might feel a sense of playfulness or happiness when you see this color. Green can be tied to earth or nature, often associated with sustainability. On the flip side, it can also be associated with wealth, prestige, or financial components. Blue can be a very calming color. It's often thought of as peaceful. You might feel trustworthiness and reliability when you see this color. Alternatively, it can also be gloomy or depressing. Purple is often associated with a spiritual or mysterious vibe. Or other times, it's associated with royalty or majesticness. Brown is commonly associated with organic products. It can be a very down-to-earth and honest color, very wholesome. White often is associated with simplicity and innocence, often with a minimalistic feel. It gives a very pure feeling. Gray can be the color of neutrality. There are various ways to portray it, either subdued, classic, serious, mysterious, mature, and more. Black can demonstrate very different feelings. It can be a sad, sorrowful emotion, or sophisticated and elegant, often even formal and luxurious. The brand will have to tell the story. The fashion and beauty industries often use black for sophistication and glamour, 
and warm colors such as red, orange, and pink for passion, confidence, and excitement. You may prefer sticking to this industry-wide trend, or you may choose to stand out in a sea of many competitors with a unique color palette that tells your own brand story. Let's go back to the topic from lesson one, where we chose what problem your products will solve for your customers. And then from lesson four, where we picked your source style and theme. Do your products help your customers feel bold and confident? Is your store environmentally friendly, diverse, luxurious, romantic? What are your customers overcoming when they use your products? Consider what emotion you want your customers to feel when they engage with your store and consider incorporating a color that represents that emotion in the logo. First, what we wanna do is actually pick one main color, AKA your store's primary color. Then we'll want to choose a color palette full of three or more colors and shades. These will be your secondary colors. Our next example is Amazon. So Amazon's branding is dominantly black, but it's also accompanied by an optimistic shade of yellow. The black is easy to read and can be replicated very easily. The yellow represents the retail giant's dedication to making customers happy. These colors attract your attention. Next, we have Instagram. So if you remember a few years back, the brand's original logo incorporated shades of the rainbow. The new logo has a color palette, including gradients of blue to yellow, with a wide spectrum of purples, pinks, and oranges in between. This rich color range is meant to evoke feelings of energy and warmth. It's also a symbol to the importance of color in the app's filters, community uploads, and more. According to neuroscientist Antonio Damasio, how consumers feel about a brand has more pull than what they think about a brand. Pair that with the fact that we know certain colors evoke certain emotions and voila, your brand colors have the ability to impact your sales or performance even more than the products you offer. Our next example is Chubby's. So the brand Chubbies are known for their holiday wear and specifically for their very short shorts. They use colors to symbolize the beach with blue and yellow. Yellow is like a pineapple or a sandy beach and the blue represents the color of the sea. The brand attracts customers who enjoy a laid back lifestyle, especially while on vacation. Different color combinations can spark different emotions. When thinking about your own brand, there's no right or wrong answer. If you find an association of a particular color to your products, it's up to you to make the final call. You may want to focus on environmental products, but instead of choosing green, you might also consider that you want your store to be thought as feminine and exciting. So you might end up choosing a pink and a red combination instead. There are a lot of ways to think about your store's color palette and tell your store's brand message. Think about which side of the spectrum you want your products associated with. Once you determine this, you'll attract the appropriate target audience. We have feminine and masculine, playful and serious, luxurious and affordable, modern and classic, youthful and mature, loud and subdued, trendy and timeless, trustworthy and rebellious, friendly and formal, local and international, rugged and refined. These are just a few examples, but think about words that describe your brand. Think about colors that represent those words and then pick a primary base color. If you're still feeling stuck, I can link to a branding color quiz that helps you determine what color is best for your brand by asking a series of questions related to your target audience and identity. I took this quiz for fun and I ended up with blue, which is not what I went for back when I chose my color palette for Let's Build a Boutique. So just to let you know, you don't have to be stuck with the results of this survey. It's just a little fun experiment. Once you've picked your main color, we can then create a palette. So if your main color doesn't fully tell your brand's story, your secondary colors in your color palette can help. So this is going to be an area where a graphic designer could step in and help, but since I know many new store owners are on a budget, I wanna show you a way to do it yourself. 
So there's a website called coolers.co. This site makes it so easy for you to choose your colors. Let me demonstrate. Okay guys, so check out how cool this website is. So what we're gonna do is click on the start the generator button. From there, you'll see a group of colors display. What you wanna do is click the space bar over and over and over again until you find a selection of colors that you like. Let's say you find a particular color that you want to include, but you don't wanna include the other colors. What you can do is lock that color like I just did, and then you can keep on clicking the space bar until you find additional colors that you like. So I'm gonna like this other shade, and now once I find a group of colors that I love, what I can do is I can actually save the color palette or I can even export it. I also have the option to change the color blindness or adjust the palette. So here I can adjust the hue, saturation, brightness, temperature, until I find what I want. I also have the ability to save particular colors. You'd have to make an account to do that. But this tool is super handy for helping you find a color palette that's perfect for you. Now that we have your palette, Make sure that you write down the hex codes. You'll be able to use these colors and all of your materials moving forward. A few places where you'll display your colors, your logo, website and emails, social media channels, digital ads, stationery, poly mailers and packaging, and so much more. Now let's take some time to consider what we want our logo to look like. Logos are an essential piece of a marketing plan. Logos help brand recognition by allowing the customer to identify the brand the second they see your products. Logos are often going to be displayed front and center on your store's website, as well as on promotional cards, social media profile pictures, and more. Logos can help tell your company story and define the theme of your products before the customer views them. If you aren't a talented graphic designer, don't stress. You can easily create one on your own with a logo generator or online editing tool. Or you can even work with a skilled branding expert. So let's take a look at a couple of online tools. First we have Canva. There is a free and paid version of Canva. We also have PicMonkey, which includes a paid version. And then you'll also find online logo generators. Some of these online logo generators will be free and some of them will cost money. I'll link to all of these in the description bar below. Alternatively, you can choose to hire someone. So you may know a graphic designer personally, or you might want to find one off the web. If you have a friend, family member, acquaintance, etc., you can ask to check out their portfolio to make sure you like their style before committing to pay them for a logo or you could hire someone directly from the web. You can look at logo designs on sites like Etsy and Creative Market or hire a designer on a website like Fiverr.com. You can also post in a business boutique Facebook group that you are looking for a graphic designer and wanna see their work. I've done all of the above for various projects over the years and I will say the prices can vary greatly. When working with someone you know personally, Set clear guidelines and make sure the graphic designer will take your feedback seriously, as this is your store's logo. When using a website like Etsy, you may find a logo that many others share, but this can be a temporary cheap place to shop when just getting started. Using a site like Fiverr means that you need to review the graphic designer's work and explain what you are looking for before you purchase their services. Read their contract and make sure the time frame, number of edits, and feedback process work for you before checking out. You'll also want to take a look at their reviews. Lastly, Let's Build a Boutique has an in-house graphic designer who can help you design your logo and color palette. My goal is to be informative, so I want to share with you multiple options, but if you're interested in working with us, I will leave the contact information down in the description bar. So here are a couple of considerations. You can create a logo with just text text plus an image. You also might want to consider the style you're going for in your logo. And we also want to consider a few additional requests if you do choose to hire someone. So you can purchase a brand book or brand guide. And depending on the graphic designer, there are going to be different things that are included. So some examples are type font, 
various logo formats, vectors, social media banners and graphics like story covers, Facebook covers, icons, and more. So that's something to consider when working with a graphic designer, what they will be providing you as the final product, whether it's just the logo or if it's a whole brand book. For more information on branding, I will link to some additional videos that I've created in the description bar. Now, I hope you all enjoyed today's video lesson. If you missed out on any past lessons, I will link them in the description bar. This video series will teach you everything you need to open an online clothing store, and this channel will teach you everything you need to know to grow and attract more loyal customers. If you're interested in learning more, hit subscribe and stay tuned on new lessons coming out weekly.